Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hindi films have been traveling for almost a century. Not just Hindi films, but Indian films have been traveling for a century. But everyone has been talking about the travels of Bollywood films and have been looking at it as, as, an, as a fallout of globalization, ignoring the earlier flows of Indian cinema since the 1930s. Indian films have been traveling since the 30s, only when they began to travel to the West, only when they began to find a bigger audience in the West, even though there was an audience for the West of foreign Indian films in the West as early as the 50s when we found that there is evidence of 100 films having been exported to the West and did find some takers, some audience in the West. It is only in the post 90s uh, audience of Hindi films in their new avatar as Bollywood films that has attracted inordinate, inordinate media attention and it is it's this new market for, the, for Indian films in the West among uh, not only in the West because they have been exported to the West but among the white audience that has, that ha that has become the talk of the whole world and that, has, that is seen as the globalization of Indian cinema, Indian commercial cinema, a movement which began uh, almost a century ago. So in this uh, section, I am going to look at, in this unit, I am going to compare two markets for Indian films, the traditional markets for Indian films. We saw in the UNESCO report that the British Malaya was one of the traditional markets for Indian films. And I am going to compare this traditional market of Indian films with the new market for Indian films in the West by looking at two spaces, the space of Singapore and the space of Germany and also um, comparing a few other perspectives. Now in the case of Singapore, it is extremely interesting because here the old market, because this is a traditional market for Indian films, um, the old audience of Indian films in uh, Singapore, who uh, some of whom were brought, born in the, the British Malaya, they rub shoulders with the new audience of Bollywood films. So there is there's an assemblage of the old audience, the old uh, Chinese, the Tamil and the Punjabi audience, uh, many of them uh, with their history in the plantation economy with the new audience uh, who consists of professional workers or new NRI audience, new expatriate audience who, freak, who be have become avid fans of Indian films in the, uh, in, since the 1990s and also a new generation of uh, viewers, a new uh, generation audience who are, uh, who, who have no knowledge of Indian cinema but seem to enjoy the new brand of Bollywood films. So we are going to look at some of these, we are going to meet some of these audience and I will summarize the interviews I had with some of them instead of playing the interviews for you. So I take you to the Jade Cineplex in Shaw Towers which is a cinema cineplex exclusively dedicated to the screening of Indian films in Singapore. The screening of Hindi films in Singapore and I must point out that in all of Southeast Asia, unlike Bangkok, we found where we found Indian films, Hindi films were screened once a month uh, some, uh, in, and some films in other languages as well were screened in theatres only once a month uh, largely due to the efforts of the Singh brothers. In Singa Singapore has is the only part of Southeast Asia which has theatres exclusively dedicated for the screening of Indian films. And there are some theatre complexes 
in which uh, by convention or uh, because of their location, Hindi films are screened and there are other theatres in which Tamil screens uh, are screened. In addition to that, some of the mainstream multiplexes on Orchard Road also screen uh, a few uh, in Hindi films such as Chani Chalk to China was uh, screened in one of the, one, one of the means, mainstreams, one of the cineplexes located on Orchard Road when it was released in 2000. Uh, 8, 2009. But Jade Cineplex in Short Hours is one such complex where Hindi films are, which is exclusively dedicated to the screening of Hindi films. So, uh, we walk into Jade Theatre by, it is on Beach Road and it is just across the National Library uh, of Singapore. When we cross the road, we inhabit, we enter a different world. Uh, we are crossing the road and when we come to this side, we enter a totally different world altogether. Uh, I take you to the ticket counter and the friendly, uh, friendly assistant, the Malay assistant in the ticket counter, who in addition to uh, selling tickets, also offers you friendly advice about the kind of films with, uh, which are doing well and which film you should be watching and which you shouldn't be watching or which hasn't found many takers and she's my informant on the films which did well, which uh, surprised me considering that those were not the kind of films which were expected to do well. But in the diaspora spaces, as I was warned by the owner of a video parlor in Bangkok, the films which do well in India are not necessarily the films that do well in the diasporas. And this information was confirmed by the friendly counter assistant in Jade Cineplex. I meet um, a young couple uh, who are queuing up to watch uh, tickets for a new release of that week a new release which was Kambak the Ishq. It was screened in this cineplex dedicated to the screening of Hindi films. And um, uh, Singapore's, uh, now the Bollywood assemblage as I said functioned with the multiple histories of Indian migration as those as well as those of uh, cinematic exhibition in the case of Singapore through which Singapore's different ethnic populations such as the Malay and the Chinese were also inserted in the Bollywood space along with South Asians and in, uh, expatriate Indians. So here this couple uh, uh, is a Malay of Ma Malay heritage. The young woman is completely ma Malay that the, gen the young uh, her escort her friend is uh, of mixed parent parentage, his father is an Indian and his mother is, an, um, uh, sorry, his uh, father is uh, Malay and his mother is an Indian. So because of that, he is able to uh, not only enjoy, uh, understand uh, the films, uh, the, the, the visual aspect of films like most Malays do, but like several many Malays and because of his knowledge of Urdu, which he has got from his mother, from one of his parents, he is able to understand the language of the film as well. And this couple, uh, the young woman was a big fan of Shahid Kapoor and John Abraham and the couple sang a song from Kuch Kuch Hota Hai For Me. Um, but other than the young couple, I also met this uh, mother and daughter duo the Malay mother and daughter, which uh, revealed to me the difference between the preferences of the new generation, the old audience of Hindi films, the mother for instance, and the new audience of Hindi, of Bollywood films, the daughter. While the mother uh, claimed to be a big fan of uh, Hindi films of the 1970s, uh, such as Diwar and was a diehard fan of Shashi Kapoor and Amitabh Bachchan and she found the in Hindi films of the 1970s better than the present uh, generation of uh, Bollywood films because according to her they had a storyline, they, they were more entertaining and uh, they were more socially or oriented than the new films. The daughter of course was uh, hooked to the new Bollywood films and the two ladies had come together to watch a Shahid, new Shahid Kapoor release, Mosam, 
which is uh, not the run of the mill Bollywood film, which is uh, which would I would assume would uh, would uh, make both the mother and daughter happy because it's serious and yet it uses the Bollywood grammar. It does bring in the old world charm when it, the story begins, and yet it is cast in the Bollywood grammar. And um, uh, now these uh, spaces of exhibition in the diasporas in uh, are spaces in which one finds not just Indian viewers, but all South Asian viewers, particularly viewers from those nations where screening of Hindi films has been banned, uh, given the hostile relations between India and Pakistan, and also in Bangladesh, which where they have not been screened for a long time. So during my uh, visit to Jade Complex, I also met these yeah, these uh, uh, Bangladeshis from who were visiting from UK, and one of the highlights of their visits, as I found in the case of the Afghanis and the Pakistanis, was to take in a new Hindi film, and they'd come to watch uh, New York. Apart from the um, Bangladeshis, I found this young doctor from US, uh, UK who was visiting again, a Punjabi doctor, a second generation Indian um, Punjabi from UK who was visiting family in, U in Singapore. And she would come along with her uh, girlfriends who were from of different nationalities, a Filipino, uh, 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 a friend from Singapore and two other friends from UK, white friends from UK. They were accompanying her during this uh, visit to the theater. Uh, but I found the space of the audience, uh, the space of Jade, uh, segmented not only in terms of ethnicity and uh, nation, but also in terms of class because uh, as opposed to the Bangladeshi expatriate women, the visiting UK Bangladeshi, the well-heeled UK Bangladeshi women, I also met these shy guest workers from Bangladesh. And as we uh, know now that Bangladesh, uh, the Singapore has uh, invites a large number of Bangladeshi migrant workers who are largely uh, employed in the construction industry and um, sometimes some of them are students. Now the sole entertainment for these workers after five days or six days of hard work, they when they get their weekly off on Sunday is to take in a film. While the Tamil migrant workers uh, gravitate towards um, sometimes to the Rex theatre when they can afford the price of the tickets, which is about, which ranges between 8 to de $10, depending on the day of the week you watch. Uh, Bangladeshi wor workers were found in uh, Jade Salem Cineplex, spending, choosing to spend their hard and earned money on watching a Hindi film, a John Abraham film. And um, we met this young couple who had come Jade hopping. I wish I could play the the song from them, but I'm not able to play the song. Perhaps I could do it later. Uh, they sang the entire Kuch Kuch Hota Hai song uh, for my benefit. It was really lovely. And they, they, they knew all the lyrics of all the Hindi film songs, which I myself wasn't aware of. And they, they were not only aware of the songs, they were also up on the gospel on Hindi films and during this time when Shah Rukh Khan visited uh, uh, Singapore, he had a huge Malay audience coming to greet him, Malay audience of all ages and generations and all sexes coming to greet him to and welcome him to Singapore. Uh, now from Singapore, I take you to another tra traditional market of uh, Hindi films and uh, this uh, as I said earlier, that in the Western world, uh, the major exports of Hindi films in from the 50s, in the 50s, uh, between 56 and 62, out of the 10 percent of films which were exported to the West, Russia constituted the most important, a major market for these films. And 
in response to a talk I gave on a community radio program in Canada, I received this letter from a Russian audience who has since become a friend and a, col uh, a contributor to a volume I have edited. Uh, through this, um, uh, we come to know how the how uh, Russians before the collapse of, we are talking about the pre-global era and before the collapse of the former USSR, how uh, uh, how the uh, uh, what was the status of Hindi films in Russia before the collapse, before the era of globalization and before the collapse of the former USSR. And I would read this to you just to, since I do not have, uh, have not conducted field work in Russia, I only have, I draw on her authority and I thank her for sharing this with me and sharing her paper with me in the edited volume, my edited volume, where she says that uh, for me as well as for many other Russian people, India is the dreamland, the motherland of philosophy, poetry and tradition. We actually do not see it as some exotic sunny sandal smelling place as some Westerners probably in my generation, it is something we grew up with a pathway to childhood. So, this is significant before we move on to the new Bollywood audience in the other parts of the West, this testimony of uh, 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 someone who grew up in the former uh, Russia is very important because in Russia unlike in the present West, Indian films were not exoticized as she distinguishes herself from other Westerners and says that it is a pathway to childhood. For example, it was my father who drew my attention to Hitopdesha when I was five and we were both e fascinated by its complex story within the story plot. My classmates and I used to be great fans of Kipling's films, though when I grew older, I understood that most of his short stories were dictated by the fear of the wild and the unknown and I think the white man's burden was basically inspired by it as well. Now, she talks about having discovered Rabindranath Tagore and then she goes into her uh, reception of uh, Russian films, of in Hindi films in Russia. And from here, from there I move on to uh, Germany. I was told that uh, except for community, uh, there are no screenings of Hindi films on, in Germany anymore, except for an occasional community screening there are no, s no further, no, no uh, screenings of Hindi films in Germany. This was in 2011. I was surprised uh, to find uh, uh, on my arrival in the tourist town of Heidelberg, uh, when I switched on my television, I found myself watching a film which, uh, which had women dressed in saris and I was uh, I was like uh, quite surprised to see that and on German television because they seem to be speaking German and um, uh, as I uh, out of curiosity I continued to watch the, f the, the film being screened on television the faces seemed very familiar to me but I, I assumed that it was part of some exotic German drama uh, telesoap or drama uh, when King Khan appeared on the screen and I realized I was watching Chakta India and uh, you wouldn't believe it, but I was watching Chakta India in German with Shah Rukh Khan speaking German. And then I was informed that Germany has, uh, has now a market for Hindi films, not only among uh, the, the South Asians, not only among the diasporas, but also among the Turkish people, the, but the Afghans, other South Pakistanis, the other South Asians, but also among Germans. And this started with the, uh, with the screen airing of uh, a down market cha channel in Germany, which was largely watched by Turkish and Afghan audience. And these films uh, were, watch, uh, were screened on the Saturdays, the day I happened to switch on my television set. And um, it was because these films were being screened on RTL, the channel um, went up market. It found viewers not only among the working class Turkish and Afghan migrants, but also among mainstream migrants. So the uh, Germany did not have 
uh, regular exhibition of uh, Indian films or, uh, as in Singapore, uh, where they continue to be screened. There are no uh, theatres dedicated to the screening of Indian films in Germany, but they are regularly screened at least in 2011. They were being shown in uh, on television and uh, other Germans watched them through on DVDs and CDs. But I was extremely surprised to find these posters of Salman Khan's new release ready being posted outside a pub in Heidelberg as one walks out of the railway station and as one walks down the bridge. One fo uh, I found these posters where you can see the dates of the screenings of Ready in different German towns on 2nd June in München, on 4th June in Köln, on 6th in Hamburg and 10th June in Hanover. And uh, they are being screen, uh, screened in cinema halls, Kino Neues in München in Cinemax in Hamburg, in Ludwig NRW in Köln, and Cinemax Nikolai in Hanover. Now, I was told that now there are no more screenings of uh, Hindi films anymore, and they are mainly community screenings. So probably these are community screenings, but they were being publicized in very visible spaces, in very mainstream spaces outside this pub in Germany. So is Germany ready for Salman Khan? It has been ready for Shah Rukh Khan for a long time. In fact, Shah Rukh Khan is a very popular uh, Hindi film actor in Germany. It started um, uh, with the shooting of his film in DD uh, of uh, Dil to Pagal Hai in the Black Forest. and. Um, Subsequently, a number of his films have not be not only been screened, but they have also been uh, shot in different parts of Germany, such as Dawn 2 was being shot at this time. Uh, now, uh, sh now oh, how does Germany look at Bollywood? How do the new audience of Germany, the new Bollywood audience as we may call them, and the new market for uh, Indian films in Germany. How is it viewed there? And how is it different from the viewing or uh, the pleasures that Bollywood films offer in the old diasporas or the traditional markets such as Singapore and Russia? To some extent, I would say that it dovetails into that interest that uh, that brand of Orientalism, which we found the interest in traditional Indian philosophy, religion, Tagore, and the works, which uh, we found in markets like Russia. It's the same cult for Indian mysticism, yoga, which, uh, which creates a taste for Bollywood in Germany. And there's a continuity between the ori new Orientalist interest in yoga and my mysticism and Bollywood in the present. Uh, this is at the uh, Heidelberg railway station. I found in the bookshop in the railway station Bollywood films, uh, um, uh, Bollywood uh, DVDs of Bollywood films. <laughs> Incidentally, the two films which I found, uh, the two DVDs uh, I found was one of Kabhi Kushi Kabhi Gam and the other one, these were uh, uh, with German subtitles and produced in Germany and the other one was Karan Arjun, an old Shah Rukh Khan star, both were Shah Rukh Khan stars. But was what surprised me even more was that not only were DVDs being sto sold in this mainstream bookshop in a railway station, but there were also Indian film magazines, Bollywood film magazines being marketed in the count and uh, available across the counter two film magazines, one is called Bollywood and the other one is called Ishq. The, the, and both these films are uh, carry are, are, are along the lines of film fair and other tabloids in India, which carry gossip about the latest gossip about Indian film stars and they are in German and they are being marketed. But interestingly, these uh, books are stacked juxt uh, in the stacks which are next to the stacks which sell books on yoga, Buddhism, Buddhism, Indian mysticism, 
rev, uh, art of living and so on. So I can you you can take a look at these uh, film magazines, Best of Bollywood, which is in English, and there's also an issue of Ishq, which I cannot see here, but I found it in the bookshop. Now from Heidelberg, we move to Mannheim and we see how Bollywood uh, audience, how a German audience get to watch films in Mannheim. Uh, as I was waiting outside this DVD shop in Mannheim, a German couple walked in. They, and this is the kind of spaces through which Bollywood films le have leaked since the 70s. They have been stocked in grocery stores and they are juxtaposed against ad all other things Indian such as henna and bindis and dals and spices. So it is part of the entire um, paraphernalia of India of uh, Indian mysticism, spirituality in the West and which is being the, the Indo Sheik that is being marketed in the West. It is in one such shop, Mannheim in the Turkish quarter. This is where I found uh, uh, I found uh, this, the places from where German audience watch subtitled Indian films. Uh, and again, like the spaces in Bangkok, these are pirated DVDs of Bollywood films. And uh, we have this young Turkish woman who picks up bangles after picking up a DVD of a film. And now we meet a young man in another uh, Bollywood based store, which is called Bollywood incidentally, and who aspires to be Shah Rukh Khan. Now this young man is from Pakistan. His uh, father has started a grocery shop in Mannheim and he stocks the largest collection of Bollywood videos and DVDs, which are uh, in is a shop called um, Bollywood, not Asia Bazaar and uh, Asia Bazaar is incidentally the oldest shop which stock DVDs. But uh, the interesting thing is when I was, what was, I was waiting outside, um, I was told to go and visit this shop when I was waiting outside uh, photographing the signboard which I do not have in this slide. I found um, young uh, German uh, boys, uh, teenagers rather. Uh, go past me singing uh, Leja Leja. And uh, this came as a surprise. I thought I had misheard them because I thought I was imagining it, but I went closer and I found they were indeed singing Leja Leja. And this came as a big surprise for me, to me because I was told that the audience for Bollywood films in Germany is largely restricted to women and that too to the young teenage women in Germany. But this was not teenage women, but young uh, teenage young men who were singing the Bollywood song when they saw me dressed in, uh, when they saw an Indian woman taking pictures of a Bollywood store, Bollywood themed store. Uh, and this is one of the oldest store which, uh, stores which has been there since the 70s owned by a Sikh who stocks Bollywood merchandise. And from Mannheim, we move to Frankfurt. In Frankfurt, once again, we see posters of Hindi films, the latest releases as well as the old releases, um, stacked uh, uh, in Harris Trading Company, owned by Mr. Bobat. And Mr. Bobat has uh, been uh, has talked Indian uh, DVDs and <laughs> video cassettes and audio cassettes of. Hindi films. He claims to have the latest collection of audio cassettes uh, in Germany, which has no takers today in the age of DVDs and CDs. And in this shop, so this is one of the oldest shops which has stocked uh, groceries in, and this is again op opposite the Hauptbahnhof for the central station in Frankfurt. And during, uh, during my, um, uh, I uh, hang, hung around the shop for almost an hour to see the kind of people who were visiting his store and the kind of films they were buying. I found um, a very interesting um, uh, respondents 
very uh, very interesting samples who are very disparate in terms of age, in terms of nationality. The first person I uh, got to meet was uh, an Ethiopian who uh, who was uh, who was now resident in uh, in Germany and who came to uh, get his DVDs of Indian films largely because of his nostalgia for homeland and because he was a, a big uh, fan of. Uh, Hindi films when he was in uh, Ethiopia, when he moved to Germany, he continued to watch Indian films and he seemed to have a preference again for the older films rather than the new films in contrast to the new Bollywood uh, audience of German films. A uh, uh, few minutes later, a German couple walked in and sought my advice as to what films they ought to be taking, to, uh, they, they ought to be watching. They had watched some of the canonical Bollywood films like Kal Ho Na Ho, Kabhi Khushi, Kabhi Kam and so on, but they wanted to watch some offbeat films and uh, sought my advice as to which one they should be watching this week. But even more surprising were these middle-aged women who had come to pick up copies of film fair and stardust from the grocery store and when I asked them about how they got interested in uh, Bollywood uh, on in film magazines, one of them volunteered to uh, inform me that she had uh, she, she began to watch Bollywood films and she liked them because they were very romantic as compared to uh, to German films and uh, they promoted traditional family values which a certain generation of uh, German women, particularly women like her, the possibilities for romance, the pr possibilities of pr preserving traditional family values uh, which some of them missed, they found in, in, uh, in Indian films, particularly Shah Rukh Khan films. And this uh, uh, middle-aged woman uh, was so inspired by Indian films that she had started learning Hindi so as to be able to understand those films better and um, also kept tabs on all the gossip in the Indian film industry by picking up a copy of Film Fair and Stardust and all the latest film magazines. And here we meet um, Mr. Raju of uh, of uh, another DVD store. This is uh, unlike Mr. Popert's store. It's not a grocery store. It's a, it's only a DVD store, and it's owned by an Afghan asylum seeker um, uh, in Germany who had to flee Afghanistan. Uh, most of the uh, most of the owners of the DVD shops in Frankfurt happen to be. Uh, Hindus or even Muslims from Afghanistan who had to flee Afghanistan after its Talibanization and many of them had set up these shops, incense shops or DVD shops which now Mr. Raju spoke fluent uh, Hindi and uh, German, English and also Punjabi because from uh, Afghanistan he had first come to India. He had um, been a garment uh, merchant in Faridabad and from there he had moved to, subsequently moved to uh, Germany. Now in Mr. Raju's shop, I found DVDs, uh, I could buy a DVD of a uh, Hindi film, the latest release, I do not remember, probably it was wanted or ready and I could get that DVD for 2 euros, only for 2 euros, whereas a uh, Legal, uh, legally made album of uh, of a very old uh, Bolli Bollywood film, say Kabhi Kushi Kabhi Gam, could was available for something like twelve dollars. So unlike uh, Germans who strictly adhere to pa piracy laws and uh, ask for original albums rather than pirated albums, uh, the South Asian. Uh, uh, buyers and even some buy, uh, German buyers that I met in the DVD shop were not averse to buying these pirated versions so as to be able to check in the latest Hindi film releases. But in uh, Mr. Raju's shop, I found not just the latest Hindi film re releases but also DVDs of the latest Punjabi films incidentally manufactured in Italy 
and marketed by a company in um, in in uh, in Netherlands. So there was a uh, so th there was a kind of triangulation of a film DVD which was manufactured in Punjab and then it was dubbed in Italy or it was a company. So it was a very complicated thing but the DVDs of Punjabi films which are not available in India I could buy in this shop in, uh, in this shop called Dostana in Frankfurt. So we are uh, and there is another store in Köln. Uh, owned by a lady called Kajol, who is again from Afghanistan, and you can see Bollywood merchandise uh, stacked along other grocery items in in her shop. So I conclude by this testimony from a young Canadian student as to why uh, the West, how the West responds to Bollywood see, uh, Bollywood films. And of course, she is a student of Indian cinema, so her uh, her appreciation of Bollywood films is more uh, it's more informed rather than that of the lay audience. So she says, when first watching the film, I didn't know what to expect. I hadn't actually seen a Bollywood film before, and have only been very incompletely informed by parodies. Therefore, I was very surprised by the modern use of Bollywood tropes. There were two love stories, they were not central to the plot. So she's talking about the film she has watched. The dance seems seems to be improvised, young young kids having fun. So what, what she seems to be saying is that the film still employed staples of Bollywood cinema, girl meets boy, a villain, the sacrificing mother, and expecting the film to end happily, but it was different. So the contrast of the happy, carefree student days against the intensity of their protests and eventually quasi-terrorist acts is what makes the film so gripping. The presence of the white, she's talking about Rangde Basanti, the presence of the white woman was also interesting from films like Shakespeare, Wala and Gandhi to plays like Borderline and novels like Passage to India. It appears that five female characters are able to relate to Indian male characters. The kinship is always emphasized. This pattern ag ag appeared again in Rangde Basanti, but I was struck by the fact that the relationship between Sue and DJ was never consummated. So this kind of sums up the response of the new generation of Bollywood aud audience, such as um, this young student of a course in film study, a young white student in a course in film studies who is uh, interested in seeing the inter in inter integration of the two cultures and she wants to see more Bombay cinema in the future. But uh, I would conclude by, uh, by the responses of the young German women who had come to pick up DVD, uh, DVDs in the store in Mannheim. When I asked them in my broken German what films they like, which films, which Bollywood feel films they had seen and who was their favorite actor, the answer was Zofiel, Zofiel, so many, so many that they couldn't possibly remember the names of the films they had seen or the names of the actors they, uh, they liked. But it's certainly King Khan, Shah Rukh Khan, who enjoys a great following not only in Germany but in Austria, where I believe fans of Shah Rukh Khan circulate dolls. Uh, in uh, modeled after Shah Rukh Khan as a way of expressing their loyalty uh, as part of his fan club. So with this, I conclude uh, this unit which compared the traditional markets of Bollywood Hindi cinema uh, with the new markets of Bollywood cinema in the uh, West and had an in-between uh, market in the West which displayed elements of both. Thank you.